Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another empties video. I have a huge bag here. This is a, what, a white barn big bag full of empties, and it is a huge combination of hair care, skin care, makeup, everything you could ever think of. So I'm going to go ahead and unpack all of this so we can go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so now that everything has been organized, I have to admit the majority of this is going to be hair care and body care slash skin care. So apologies if you're not super interested in that and you're really looking for more makeup. There is going to be makeup, but it definitely is not as much as the rest of the categories here. So I'm going to start with the miscellaneous category, which is mainly like house care and nail care, and then we'll go into the rest of the categories. The first I have is this just Walgreens. It's 100% acetone nail polish remover. I really like Holo Taco and I like doing thick layers of the nail polish. So what I do to remove the nail polish is going in with a soaked cotton pad and then putting on top um, cheap tin foil. <laughs> really, I think that's how you're supposed to remove what is it acrylics but that's the best way i could remove like this many layers of good nail polish so that's what i've been doing i really liked this walgreens nail polish to be 100 percent honest it's working a bit better than the one that i got off of amazon a little bit ago so if i'm gonna be honest i would recommend this if you are rec if you are removing hollow taco nail polish or nail polish that is gel. So I actually would recommend this if you were at home, you know, trying to just remove your own nail polish because this seemed to be the most effective nail polish remover that I have seen. Also, one of the most affordable. The next random empty that I have here is Febreze. I just love the scent of the original Febreze. I don't know what it is. I've loved it ever since I was a child and now that I'm like literally quarantining at home. I mean, despite the fact that the rest of the world is now realizing, oh, we might need to re-quarantine again. I've been in basic regular quarantine here in New Jersey since March. I leave my house once a week with the exception of the one weekend my boyfriend and I for our anniversary they like, went to an Airbnb. That is it. Like, I've been quarantining and everything. All of that to say that I really appreciate scents and keeping my room fresh. And <laughs> I just love Febreze and it has helped and I've gone through at least two of these if not more, since quarantine started. The next random product we have here is actually my favorite top coat for nail polish. I, I, I have mentioned that I love Holo Taco nail polishes, but the top coat doesn't dry enough and doesn't dry hard enough for my tastes. I really like the Seish Vite. I'll have the name written right here. Um, and I can get this nail polish topper at Walgreens, CVS, and on Amazon. I really enjoy this topper specifically because it dries super fast. Like within two minutes it is completely dried down and it works with any formula of nail polish. I've tried this with Holo Taco, I've tried this with drugstore formulas, with higher end formulas. It just works really well and this is the one like nail care product other than Holo Taco that I've continued to purchase and just love and enjoy and endorse. Let's move on to skincare. So I have a couple of skincare products. The first one is a uh, makeup remover. This is the Bioderma blah 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 it's all in French but this is the Bioderma uh, micellar water and this is honestly one of the best micellar waters. The only other micellar water that I like more than this is the CeraVe which I do not know if they're discontinuing that because I could not for the life of me find that in any drugstores in Target online anywhere so I think they discontinued it but this you know behind that is my favorite and I tend to buy this in packs of at least two on Amazon it is just so good I use it on a, um, a little cotton round to remove all of my eye makeup I like to use for the rest of my face either a makeup wipe or the uh, makeup eraser the little minis to remove all my face makeup but when it comes to my eye makeup I do need another kind of makeup remover for that and so this one has been kind of my go-to and I love it I would definitely recommend this one if you're interested I think the best place to find it would probably be on Amazon at this point but I'll see if I can find any links and have them down below next for skincare I have my favorite chapstick this is just the Blistex uh, this is the medicated Blistex lip balm I get these in like packs of two at least it like either in Walgreens or at you know your regular drugstores but these are just so good uh, especially since I've been home I have this I have to admit 
when I was leaving the house and when I was doing a full face of makeup and going out, I would wear lipstick a lot more. Uh, as I've been home and really not going anywhere or doing anything, I've barely been wearing lipstick and I've been really wearing chapstick, blistex, just anything to moisturize my lips a lot more. And this has played a huge part in that. This is just so affordable. I pick it up at my local Walgreens. It's so affordable and it's my favorite chapstick ever so i would really recommend this if you're ever in the just you know the market for a good affordable chapstick next for skincare we have three products from the ordinary which is honestly my favorite affordable skincare brand the first is the toner so i actually went through an entire toner this is the ordinary glycolic acid seven percent toning solution this is a strong toner in the sense that you should only really use it once a day as opposed to using it in the morning and at night i liked this toner a lot um if it wasn't for the fact that my family member bought me another toning like a big toning bottle of other solution before i finished this i would have bought this again it felt strong at first it felt like a little tingly like it, it kind of stung a little bit when i used it but Using it once a day, I felt like it actually like made a difference in my skincare. I really do like the size of the product that you get as well as the actual applicator. Like this, this is so good for applying just on a cotton pad. And I feel like a lot of other brands, even brands that I like, don't really keep that like, I don't know, they don't take that into account when they're designing their packaging but this was just so good i liked this i liked the price i liked the packaging i liked how much product i got into it it was just fantastic and i really do want to purchase this again you know most likely after my no buy when i finish my current toning solution but this was really really good the last two products i have here from the ordinary are <laughs> of course my caffeine solution and my vitamin C solution. So the caffeine solution, the 5% caffeine solution. I feel like I've talked your ears off about this already. It's a really it's a really good solution specifically for targeting like your under eyes and your um, eyelids if you get really really puffy. I use this daily, morning and night on my under eyes and on my eyelids. It helps me feel significantly less puffy and also really reduces the uh, fine lines under my eyes so this is this i mean especially the caffeine solution i've bought continuously for at least two years now and i will continue to do so moving on the vitamin c solution this is my favorite this is the ethylene ascorbic acid 15 percent solution i have worked my way up to this solution and this percentage from the very bottom of the ordinary's offerings this is my favorite vitamin c i love this i use this every morning right after my skincare routine and i make sure i put on spf after this because you definitely should but this is just a good affordable vitamin c and when i see companies come out with vitamin c that are like it's 80 dollars like for a bottle like like what the hell are they doing you can get a really good affordable vitamin c from the ordinary this bottle is less than 20 dollars, and it lasts long a long time because you're only using it in the mornings it's just so good honestly i think at this point 80 percent of my skincare routine is from the ordinary so i really love this really appreciate this and i've already bought two more bottles of this specific formula to continue using as my vitamin c so the next uh, quick section we can go through is like my body care section. And the first one is a lotion sample I got from Lush. So my favorite Lush lotion for the longest time was the Karma Cream. I loved the Karma Cream. I have like three bottles as backup currently and I have them as backup because Lush discontinued that scent. I know, I am so sad, so disappointed, but ever since they announced that i've been looking for a replacement and so far the closest i've been able to find is this little sample that i got which is called the pansy body lotion and the big difference is that both scents have huge amounts of like orange in them um while the karma cream i really can't super describe but it's orange with some other scents Whereas this one is orange with scents that are more fresh. So this one smells kind of like an orange baby powder is kind of the best way I can explain it. But it has that orange tinge that I really loved out of the Karma Cream. So I think my go-to lotion after Karma Cream has been discontinued will be this Pansy Body Lotion. So 
I really liked it. I got a full bottle, you know, sample of it. I've liked it to this point. And so I think the next point is going to be after my no buy is done to buy a full size of this and continue using it and see if I like it as much as I liked the pansy. Not see if I like it as much as I liked the karma cream. Excuse me. Next for body care, we have the deodorant that I love so much. This is the Dove uh, Advanced Care Cool Essentials Lotion. T to be honest, I'm trying another uh, another deodorant out right now, and I hate it. Spoiler alert, it's the native deodorant. It is terrible. I don't know why people keep doing ads for native deodorant because it's trash, and I hate it, and I'm not even leaving my house. How terrible does native deodorant have to be to not even work well inside my own house in the winter? That being said, I, <laughs> I really like this Dove deodorant. I've used it for years and I, I have a feeling that after I finish the really terrible native deodorant that I have right now, I'm going to go right back to the Dove. So, dip, dip, mwah. Last but not least, we have two products from Bath and Body Works in my favorite scent. So this is the Japanese Cherry Blossom. I have the Fine Fragrance Mist, which is just the body mist. And I have the 24 Hour Moisture Ultra Share Body Cream. Honestly, this body cream is not my favorite lotion overall. I've got other lotions that I like that are more hydrating and smell a little bit better, but I really like the scent. Um, and I get that really out of the body spray, so I probably will not pick up this lotion again. I'm pretty sure I got it because it was like a, a buy three, get three free sale, so I got this for free. Uh, yeah, not my favorite scent. Uh, it's not the most moisturizing of lotions, but if I, if I were given it for, like, like if someone were to give it to me for free, would I use it? Yes, which is kind of what I already did. That being said, the body spray is one of my favorites, and I've used this body spray since I was literally like 13, and I've continued to use it on a daily basis. I do have like more higher end expensive perfumes. I guess the geese have an op like opinion on my perfume. But I do have more higher end like Burberry, Tom Ford like perfumes in my collection. But on a daily basis, I'm not using those. I mean, I'm not rich enough to use this on a daily basis, let's be honest. On a daily basis, I'm using this body spray, even in my house. Like, I just like giving like myself a quick, like, little spritz, spritz body spray to smell nice, give me a little spritz in the hair, and this is what I use for it. I have at least two backups in my backup drawer of this body spray because I did pick them up during the last sale a couple of months ago, so I don't think I'm going to run out of this anytime soon, especially because a bottle of this size, even using it daily would probably take you at least three months to use and that's being generous next let's move into hair care and i'm surprised at how much hair care i actually have in here all right first let's talk about a conditioner that i tried that i wasn't actually a huge fan of this is the shea moisture hydrate and repair conditioner with manuka honey and yogurt and mafora and baobab oils okay so th this is the bottle it wasn't the best conditioner I've ever tried. It was a little bit too thick to come out of the bottle, but it wasn't thick enough to really hydrate my hair. It smelled kind of bad. Uh, yeah, it just smelled like a little bit over-perfumed honey. I wasn't a fan of that. And honestly, the packaging was terrible. This should be in a packaging that is like a tub. It should not be in this kind of... What is this called? It should not be in this whatever packaging i'm not a huge fan of that it took me way too long to get out enough product to use on all of my hair i have a lot of hair and it's very thick i was sitting here like this in the shower for like five minutes trying to get out enough product to use in my hair it was annoying so that being said i don't think i'm ever gonna buy a conditioner from shea moisture again unless it is in a tub <laughs> it was just so annoying it smelled bad it wasn't the best blah Next, I got a sample of a uh, apple cider vinegar hair rinse, and this is from DP Hue. This is the ACV apple cider vinegar hair rinse. I used this when I was deep conditioning my hair right before a shower, as opposed to doing it overnight, which is kind of my go-to. And this just worked okay. It smelled bad, which is like, eh, apple cider vinegar, okay. But it didn't really do anything for my scalp at all that I could see. I'm glad I got a sample of it as opposed to buying a full size and looking at the full size prices. Not worth it. Just buy apple cider vinegar either from your local grocery store or from Whole Foods. Just like don't go for the fancy ones because they're not worth it. 
Next, I have two deep conditioners from Garnier. So these are the Garnier Fructis Nourishing Treat One Minute Hair Masks, which I have to say, I have not tried either of these for exactly one minute, and that seems kind of stupid to me unless your hair is straight and thin and oily, which at that point, why are you looking for a moisturizing hair mask? You don't need it. Uh, so these are the hair masks in coconut extract and papaya extract. So I bought a whole pack of these on Amazon. The last one I still have not used yet. It is in my backup drawer. And to be honest, I wasn't really impressed with either of these. Oh, okay. So right off the bat, I really did not like either of the scents of these. Like, neither of them smell what I want my hair to smell like for overnight, much less at least a minute. It, it just, they're not good. That being said, the small size of these, this is typic, this is technically like the bigger size, like the regular sale price size of these, I believe. Um, cause they have like smaller sizes and bigger sizes, but they don't make that very clear. And when they're in Target, which is where Nope, that's which is where I first saw these. Whereas I bought these on Amazon, they don't really don't make the sizes very clear. Um, so I only really got a one use and a half out of each of these. So I technically had to use one full use of this, and then half a use of this, half a use of this, and then one full use of this to use them up. I hated these just because of the scents. They did not really moisturize my hair. They really didn't do much for me. Um, honestly, I think the last one that I have, I think it's the avocado one, but I will correct myself if I'm wrong, you, you know, in the next empties video. That's the only one I like the, the scent of. <laughs> and so I use these two first because I hated the scents. I will not be touching either of these with a 10 foot pole because of just how bad they smell, much less like how well they worked, which wasn't that great. Uh, next we have a head and shoulders product that I had to use just to like use up because I didn't it wasn't really made for me and I don't know why I purchased it I just got it this is the head and shoulders daily moisture scalp cream which is this is really made for people who do protective hairstyles like cornrows or anything you know to really go in and moisturize their scalp I just bought the entire royal oils collection when it first came out because I wanted to try all of it before I realized this wasn't really made for me so why did I get this I ended up using this as a deep conditioner. I used it as a deep conditioner as I washed my hair today, and it, it's not bad. I'm being honest. It actually smells really good, and it conditioned, you know, better than a couple of other things that I've tried. That being said, would I buy this again? Absolutely not, because it's not made for my hair type or my scalp type. I don't have a need for this, but I'm glad that even though I bought this and realized it wouldn't really work for me in the way that it was intended, I found a way for it to work to work for me so that that's what I did yeah next we have a deep conditioner that I absolutely adore and would highly recommend to anyone who's looking for a deep conditioner this is from Cantu and this is the Cantu shea butter leave-in conditioning repair cream I got this big jumbo size which uh, is 20 ounces off of Amazon this smells delightful it smells delightful it works so well and you have so much product in here like it's really affordable you have a lot of product i i love this and i would really recommend this i think this should be your one-stop shop if you're looking for a deep conditioner go to cantu because they're affordable they smell good and they work well Next, let's move into hair styling products. So before I had kind of hair treatment products, these are specifically stylers. The first one I want to bring up is this hair milk spray from Carol's Daughter. Daughter. Jesus. Carol's Daughter. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, I will never buy a hair milk or a hair spray ever again because this just smelled bad and did not work as well as water. I'm just being honest there. Even when it came to refreshing, like it said it's supposed to be better at. At least for me and my hair texture, this was a complete waste of money. And it took me so long to just finish it up because I dreaded using it every time I did. So, just use water. <laughs> Next, we have a couple of leave-in styling creams that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is from Living Proof. This is the Nourishing Styling Cream. This really did nothing for my hair. This is a big sample that I got from Sephora at some point, and it smelled like, eh. Like, it's, it smells like a fresh blowout, which, you know what, to be honest, is not what I'm looking for with my curly hair. <laughs> but this, 
this styling cream really didn't do a whole lot for me and my hair and I think this is because because it smells like a blowout I think it's probably supposed to be used for blowouts not 100% sure on that but like that being said th I didn't like this the next styling cream that I actually thought was a bit too thick for my hair type and texture uh, I have between like 3a and 3b hair type and texture this is from madam cj walker and this is the frizz fighting coconut and moringa oils curl whip styling souffle this is a big sample i got from sephora a while ago and i really don't know how the brand is doing because i tried googling the brand they're no longer carried on sephora and i cannot even find a place to buy them online so like yikes um but that being said this styling cream actually smelled really good but I do think it was a bit too thick for my hair. Obviously, this probably was not made for my hair texture. And I got this just like as a 100 point perk at Sephora. So this probably isn't made for my hair texture. That being said, it actually smells pretty good. But I'm worried about the brand because I really can't find it like anywhere. Let's talk about gel. So I've got a couple of gels here and I actually like quite a few of them. So the first one is the Zotos All About Curls High Definition Gel. And this is the Sally Beauty line of gel. So this one, I have to say, this gel only works well if you use it with another gel. So the way that I would go in with this gel is as I am styling my hair, I would go through and section it and bring this gel all the way through my curls. And then I would go in with another gel to finger curl them because I do finger coil my hair every time I wash and style it. So this wasn't something I could, this isn't a one and done. This wasn't something I can use by itself. So that being said, it seemed kind of like a waste of money for me because there are other gels out there that I can just use by themselves and they work really well. So I don't think I will be buying this again unless there is a gel that I happen to like that only works well with another gel, which do I see that really happening? No. I'm trying to like justify this so it's it wasn't great for me or my hair texture if you have finer hair I think this would probably work so much better for you next let's talk about two gels that I adore 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 the first one I've talked about in another empties video this is from Mizani this is the Mizani true textures coils uh perfect coil oil gel so I had a, a full size of this sent to me in PR through Influencer, and I loved it. And then I was able to get a sample of it, like a big sample of it through uh, Sephora. So I jumped on that because I love this gel and I still love this gel. It's a really good gel. I really do want to buy another one of these once I run out of all of my gels after my no buy because this was a true good one and done gel that left my hair t like textured and defined but not crunchy i uh, i love this gel last but certainly not least for hair care we have my favorite gel i, I don't know if i can yeah i'm gonna say my favorite gel and this is from dippity do this is the girls with curls dippity do light hold curl jelly 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 this is spectacular i love the packaging that it's in a tub as opposed to anything else i love the price point i got this at uh marshall's and it was only 5.99 you can get this at amazon and it's like double that price but uh, I, I would buy it for that price i have bought this online already my backup is bought from amazon this smells amazing it smells like I don't know it smells like a like a fantasy salon when you're like five when you're like doing your barbie's hair it smells so good and it works so well i love this so much it is worth the 5.99 if you can find it at marshall's it is worth however much you can find it on amazon i've already bought backups of this and i'm about to bring it out because i just finished this this morning as i was styling my hair i really this is the one like styling product i can't live without Last but certainly not least, we have the few makeup items in this empties video. So let's jump into the first foundation I have, and this is the Wet n Wild uh, Pump Makeup Locker 3-in-1 BB Cream. I have had several of these, and I love this. If you missed the video, I actually used this to dupe a favorite luxury $80 foundation of mine. I'll have that up in the cards if you missed it, but I, I love this so much um and i did finish the entirety of the bb cream in here it is just a, a really good light coverage just satin bb cream 
If that's what you're looking for, I hope you can find this. I really never figured out whether or not this was limited edition or not from Wet n Wild. I hope it is permanent, but this was a part of a collection with a YouTuber, which I believe was Blogilates, the whole makeup, like the whole pump line was like workout makeup, which I'm opposed to. Like if you're working out, don't feel a need to put on makeup to appease other people or yourself. If you're working out, you should just have a bare face. That's just what I believe and what I do and what I see but I really do like this foundation despite the way that it's marketed and I do have I think at least one more of these in my collection and it's just it's one of my favorite BB creams ever. Next we have a couple of powders the first being a loose powder from Cody. This is the Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder in the shade Naturally Neutral. I have to admit this is your best bet if you are a, of a lighter complexion, unfortunately, for an affordable and available loose powder. This thing is huge. This is how many grams? This is uh, 65 grams of product, which is huge. It takes, it takes me so long to finish one of these. And you get an actual poof poof in here to actually use with it. It is 65 grams of product. It smells like grandma, which... It does go away once you finish the rest of your face, but if you're not okay with the resulting nose of just grandma perfume when you open it, it's probably not going to be for you. But this is such a good, affordable, loose powder option. I do want to try, I believe that there were a couple of other loose powder options that I've never tried before, like the Ben Nye, or I think there was one more where they had like a bunch of loose powder option because as someone who does makeup every day I do makeup literally every day a good affordable chunky big loose powder is something I need to look for because I'm using it literally every day but I do really appreciate this I have another backup in my collection I believe and if not this is something I would definitely purchase again and I do purchase this in person at Walgreens I cannot find it anywhere else other than my local Walgreens and the shade that works best for me and my pale butt is naturally neutral shade 11 I believe the other loose powder I have in here is actually one that I like a lot but it's a little bit too expensive for me to want to purchase and repurchase and repurchase this is from kvd vegan beauty K kendo vegan beauty kindness with vegan beauty and this is their loose powder the locket loose powder in the shade translucent this is a sample i got from sephora and i actually really like this but that being said it's expensive for a loose powder. I have at least three good affordable loose powders that I can purchase at any time, you know, at my disposal. So for a loose powder to really like entice me, it has to be amazing. Like the Natasha Denona loose powder or the Givenchy loose powder. So like this one, it worked and it was good, but it's, it's not amazing to the point where I would pay that price point for it. The last powder we're going to talk about is a powder I've used for so long, and this is from Rimmel. And this is the Rimmel, uh, I don't actually have the top to this, but this is the, the matte uh, powder, and this is in the shade 001 Transparent. I don't have the lid anymore because I actually used this as a mixing medium to mix with some of the powders in my Pan That Palette face palette that I frankened in order to make my face palette. If you missed that last video, I'll throw it up in the cards. But since this was my favorite face powder, like at the time, and still, you know what, to be honest, still my favorite face powder. I use this to mix in with like the lighter shades of the blushes that I was trying to create in order to make a, a better mixing medium. But this being said, this is a really great mixing medium if you're wanting to franken shadows, but it's also a fantastic face powder. This has been my go-to, like the Make It Matte, I think it's the Make It Matte or Matte, something matte face powder and it's been amazing and I've bought so many of them especially when I actually had a Walgreens nearby me closed down so everything went on sale and I got like two of these for a dollar each which ah yes <laughs> I love that so much for a dollar these are typically I think around eight or nine dollars each I would say it's worth it at that point but when I saw these were on sale for a dollar I screeched in the Walgreens and I packed my bag 
it's a great it's a great face powder i really enjoy it and it's been kind of my go-to for a long time next we have a unfortunately a product i didn't get to use a whole lot before it dried out this is the house of lashes lash glue and this is like a mini in the black shade i believe i bought this from sephora because that's the only ooh, excuse me for dropping it that's the only place I believe I've bought lash glue from before. And this, the House of Lashes, while the, it works really well, they dry out so fast. So to be honest, I don't think they're worth the price. Surprisingly, I'm actually wearing lashes right now. And the lash glue that I'm wearing is not House of Lashes. Let me double check. The lash glue that I'm wearing right now is the Duo. I got a Duo Duo. <laughs> so I've got a Duo Duo where it's black on one side and white on the other. And it's a great lash glue. So to be honest, I would recommend going for the Duo lash glue as opposed to the House of Lashes, which is more expensive but and works better but dries out so much faster, so it's in the long run, not really worth it. Last but certainly not least, I have two setting sprays so the first setting spray is the milani make it last i have talked about this for so long i love the setting spray it's one of my favorite drugstore setting sprays i love the scent i love the packaging i love how much product you get this is honestly like the perfect drugstore setting spray it is a great dupe for the mac fix plus if you're looking for one this i will continue to buy i have at least one or two backups in my collection already i love this to death Next, we have a setting spray that I liked at first, but as I used it more, I liked it less, unfortunately. This is from Pixie. This is the Pixie Skin Treats Glow Mist. And like at first, I liked it. It had a really good spray and apparatus, and it smelled good, and it worked decent, like to give me a little bit of glow on top of my, you know, look. But as I used this more, the sprayer got gunked up and no matter what I did this would no longer spray well so it does not matter like how good your formula is if your packaging gunks up after two weeks of use it doesn't matter how good your sprayer is it's gonna be trash so I depotted this into a wet and wild bottle this one because <laughs> uh, I love the sprayer I love the packaging and all the sprayer on these wet and wild sprays and even then, it's just like an okay setting spray, to be 100% honest. I would 100% recommend a Milani setting spray or a Wet n Wild setting spray over this one. One, because the formula is just better. It works better for setting your makeup down. And two, I didn't have to repot the Milani or the Wet n Wild as I had to repot this one just to get it usable again. All right, so we're finally here. I feel like I've been talking for an hour. Those are all of my recent empties. Let me know down below what's the last product that you finished up, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.